Welcome to the Parliament of the World's Religions. Uh, we're here with Dr. Keith Burton, who is uh, on faculty at Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, Keith, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to be here. Dave. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, Could you sir. tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your academic work, your research, and what you're working on right now? Okay. Well, I'm coming here from Huntsville, Alabama, but <laughs> deeper roots, though. I was uh, born in London, England, of Jamaican parents. Mm. And uh, I'm teaching right now in the School of Religion there okay. and uh, direct the Center for Adventist Muslim Relations. Okay. Now, my academic training mm. is actually in New Testament interpretation and classical rhetoric. I'm oh, a PhD from goodness. Northwestern yes, University. Sir. Yes, sir. You know, but um, I have a strong interest in the interfaith. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, what was your inroad? I mean, how did you like start off in the interfaith uh, world? Well, I. <laughs> I could probably go 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 back to my childhood, really, yeah, you know? yeah. and uh, going back to my childhood, um, growing up in a multicultural London, mm. you know, uh, we had very close relationships with people who didn't necessarily have the same faith right. walk as we did. Right. So I remember uh, my crew as a kid in yeah. um, in, in in high school. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a Greek Orthodox, you know, Paul Christofelou, and then mm. there was a. Roman Catholic Angelo Benedictus, and, mm. and then th th then there was a um, actually two Muslims, Giesh Udin and wow. and um, uh, who's the other one, Shahab Raza, <laughs> and so and, 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 and so the exposure mm -hmm. uh, from my youth, and then of course uh, my own path. I was uh, born in a home uh, which was Seventh Day Adventist, okay. but in my teenage years, I yeah. um, played a little bit. I shouldn't say play a little bit. I explored a little bit right. in Rastafarianism, oh, wow. you know, and so uh, that, that, that that was something that a lot of youth back then were yeah. kind of looking, were looking for identity. Right. right. And so yeah. in my adult years, mm -hmm. I've um, you know explored uh, in in interfaith through academic means. You know, right. I've written, written a lot about Islam. I teach mm. world world religions. Mm. I'm involved with different interfaith groups mm. in town, etc. And so again, it's something that's that's as deep as my childhood. Right, right, and right. it's in my blood. You know, having lived in Birmingham, England, you know, yeah. I had a chance to go to school there and finish up my doctoral uh, work in interreligious relations and diplomacy. Mm. Living in Birmingham, England, in particular, you see diversity literally on every corner. I mean. Mm. The whole concept around multiculturalism is a little different than it is here in the United States mm -hmm. of America. When we say multiculturalism, we're always talking about the melting pot, right? You know, the the gumbo, yes. uh, the <laughs> mixture of so many different ethnic groups. But in England, it's a little different because it's more of a policy in a sense. It's more mm -hmm. of a formation in the fact of the matter that people are living side by side yes. with one another. Yes, I remember living in uh, the student flat upstairs, someone from Pakistan. To the left of you, someone from Thailand. Mm -hmm. To the right, you know, someone from another country. And then moving away from student housing and literally living downtown in Birmingham, England, the world was in my apartment complex. In your apartment complex, next yeah. door, head school, you know, very, very different than the United States of America. Part of the dynamics could be, of course, mm -hmm. the um, immigrant pop population in the yeah. United Kingdom is, is, is relatively small. I think right. it's probably no more than, than 10%, 10 yeah. even though most of those are concentrated in the big cities. Right. But growing up, I, I, I found that it wasn't about um, uh, cultural segregation, religious yeah. segregation, etc. Yeah. It's most economic segregation. Right, 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 right. If you're poor, you, you live with other poor people poor. regardless yeah. of, 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 of who is who. So right. that's, that, that, that's one of the things I really liked about England. You know, there was mm. um, sort of an intentional yeah. um, effort to sort of integrate mm -hmm. and uh, we're at school, you know, we watch fo fo football together, we right. visit each other's homes, yeah. etc. So there was more intentionality right. there. Right. Um, I kind of miss some of that coming to the United States of America, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad that, you know, yeah. more of that is happening now, right. especially in, in, in Huntsville, Alabama, yeah. you know, there's, there's more intentionality. Well, well, today we're at the yeah. Parliament uh, for the World's Religions here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you just look around the, the exhibition hall, mm -hmm. there are folks from literally, literally around the world. Mm -hmm. Roughly about 7,000 to 8,000 uh, attendees will land on Salt Lake this week. But I kind of want to go back a little bit and uh, have you unpack the fact that, okay, you're in London, England, yeah. growing up, your formative years there. The fact that you have to, in a sense, learn how to engage across cultural lines. That's not something that we're kind of born with, you know, we have mm -hmm. to learn how to engage, how to um, not offend, how to, uh, in a sense, understand the other. Mm -hmm. And many of those experiences, I'm pretty sure you would say, 
uh, were and still are priceless. Mm -hmm. But how important are those experiences today in this new world in which we live in? Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're very important. You yeah. know, you speak about learning how to sort of navigate in yeah, a sense yeah. amongst these, these different cultures. Right. Um, as a child, it, it, it wasn't difficult, you know, in, yeah. in your early years because yeah. Uh, most of the time, you're not even thinking about mm -hmm, religion, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now, um, growing, growing up as a Seventh-day Adventist, I, I, I never ate pork and everything, so I knew that if Shahab Raza had a sandwich, <laughs> you know, he's, he's a Muslim, I, 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 I can share his sandwich right, and vice right, versa, sort right, of thing, you right, know. Right. Now, pork, pork with stuff food, the right. pork sandwich, he's like, Keith, you, 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 you can't share today, you know. <laughs> and, and so, but the, 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 those, that's about as far as we went, the right. whole diet thing. Yeah. Uh, we never really visited each other's space of worship, right. etc. Mm -hmm. But the older you, you get, the more mm -hmm. um, aware where you are right. of some of the differences, particularly yeah. if the um, circle of friends that you're with mm -hmm. are more serious about practicing their faith. Right. And it's at that point where you start looking into some of these taboos yeah. and saying, okay, I guess I can do this, I can't do this, okay, right. I'm not, not, not going to knock, knock this door at a certain time on Friday because right. they're probably praying, etc. Of course, of course, you know, of and, course. And, and so there's more intentionality mm. um, the older you get. But I, I think having the exposure right as a child yeah. and basically seeing everyone as one, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. the older you get, making the adjustment right. uh, for, for, for me was easier. Right. I think it's probably going to be a little harder for someone who's sort of raised in a silo right, <laughs> right. and now they're, they're, they're exposed right. and it's the first time, you know, you're 40 years old, it's the first right. time you meet someone, oh wow, right. you're a Hindu or wow, right. you're a Sikh, yeah. what's that thing yeah. in your head sort of yeah, thing. Culture yeah, culture shock. Right, so, yeah. so basically a culture shock, you yeah. know. But growing up in, 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 in a school again where and in a, in, in a neighborhood right. where there are people of all different faiths, mm. you know, where you were kind of used to seeing Sikhs walking down the street, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. etc. You know, you look at these and it's not the other. That's it's, it. it's really um, a part of our, com our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the biggest challenges for many of us, especially here in the U.S. in particular, is the fact that we have to learn about commonality. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the history of racism in this country, the history of separatism and separation of groups, and the fact that if you just don't like someone, you can just move to the other side of town, or you can just move to Minnesota or Tennessee or whatever the case might be. I remember, like, in England, it, it, a densely populated country, in a mm -hmm. sense. And, you know, if you're in London, if you're in uh, Sully Hole, if you're in Birmingham, Manchester, I mean, you can't get away from coming in contact on a daily basis with people from different ethnic groups, different religious traditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, driving down the street, no longer, you know, do you see churches, per se, mm -hmm. throughout England, mm -hmm. but you see mosques, you see temples, mm -hmm. pagodas. I mean, the list goes on and on because of secularism, in a sense, right, that right, is right. widespread in yes, parts yes, of Europe. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the practice of Christianity is not as uh, popular or mm -hmm influential as it was at one time. So mm -hmm. I think that's that has a lot to kind of do with it. You're in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. I'm from Huntsville. <laughs> so, you know, when we talk about Huntsville, we always say Huntsville is an uh, international town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many different uh, traditions are represented there. Huntsville mm -hmm. is, I think it's 51% uh, of color mm -hmm. uh, now. Uh, I will be biased and say that it's one of the most progressive uh, cities in the state of Alabama. It is. <laughs> the Marshall Space Flight Center, the engineering hub mm -hmm. of the South. Actually, the, the highest percentage of uh, PhDs per capita in the nation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, that kind of speaks to the interfaith world in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, uh, a large interfaith community there in Huntsville, if I'm right, correct. Right, the Huntsville Interfaith Mission Service. That's it. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're involved with Yeah, I'm with involved that. with that. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So, uh, Considering the fact that, you know, Huntsville, with all of its tradition, uh -huh. all of its, uh, the stigma, you know, as it uh -huh. relates to Alabama uh, uh -huh. and whatnot, uh, you know, what is some of the work that's going on on a daily basis? Are you working between Oakwood and the community to kind of assist and aid and influence and what yeah. are you doing? Well, you know, my specific responsibility is working yeah. with the Muslim community. And again, it's through the Center for Adventist Muslim Relations. Right. And um, our goal is really to build bridges of understanding. That's it. And, uh, you know, we're looking at the um, way in which Islam is seen as, this, as, as, as a recent scourge sort of thing, mm. you know. And uh, a lot of the culprits of uh, this, this demonizing our, our, Christ, our Christians, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so we, we, we felt there needed to be a positive face, you know, from the Christian world mm -hmm. uh, to let Muslims know that, listen, you know, in the same way as uh, 
you're being misrepresented mm. by the so-called ISIS and Boko Haram, mm. Al-Shabazz and other groups. Yeah. You know, we don't want those Christians who say you have no place in the United States of America, right. who say your religion is illegitimate, mm. who sort of twist history mm -hmm. to make it seem as if, you know, the faith was born out of demons or right, something. Right, right. We, we don't want that to be the impression of Christianity right. that you have. Right. And so we build intentional bridges of understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, our center is built on three core principles. Okay. It's learning, loving, and sharing. Go on. Learning is our desire to learn as much about Islam from Muslims. You know, ah. and so we're not looking so at. So we're what, not taking it from the theoretical. No, and no, we're trying to teach right. ourselves about, but we're bringing right. in the practitioners uh -huh. and the spiritual leaders. Right. You okay. know, and and yeah. moving from the whole one size fits all yeah. motive. You know, yeah. every Muslim is that sort of thing. You know, so <laughs> yeah. we're looking at the diversity. And one of the things that we do actually, you know, each year we um, have a lecture series, mm -hmm. um, the Al Hal Khatab lecture series. Yeah. That's yeah. a word from the Quran, meaning mm -hmm. people of the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically take a scholar, you know, an, an, a Muslim scholar who yeah. uh, deals with a theme from the Quran, which also has resonance with scripture, right. you know, and uh, we've had uh, Zainab Alwani mm -hmm. from our university. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had um, Jake, Jacob Bender, who is actually a Jew, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. but he was the um, first uh, non-Muslim mm -hmm. actually to serve as a regional director for CARE, that's the right. Center for American Islamic Relations. Right, right. And so he's, 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 he's spoken in the lecture series. Yeah. And um, also uh, last year we had Mahmoud Ayyub. Oh, wow. You know, and there, there, there was one, one guy, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Darrell Izzell, you know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Shameless plug, man. Shameless plug. I didn't, I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, I had a chance to speak uh, uh, one year. Uh, I think I, um, uh, the topic was around political Islam. We were right, looking at right. U.S.-Iranian relations right, at the right, time. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, that kind of dovetails into uh, um, a question around religious extremism. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've had a chance to go back and forth and, and talk about uh, the rise in religious extremism, you know, literally around the world. Uh, where do you see, um, I don't want to say political Islam, but where do you see uh, a lot of these tensions coming from, you know, with respect to uh, the rise in insurgent behavior, you know, uh, in parts of, you know, the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, where is this really coming from? Is there a deep-seated frustration with secularism or modernization, globalization? What's really going on? Okay, um, let me let me dovetail in that by just saying very quickly the other two principles in case people people are saying uh, forget uh, all about it. I love loving and sharing, but, but, but if we have time to get back to that, right. but but that's loving and sharing. But um, what is the root of this, you know, um, uneasiness? Yeah. With you? you know, I I think you are correct. You know, there there, there is um, a concern about this growing sector, etc. Basically, I think there's a clash of cultures in one way, you know, okay. a clash of worldviews. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we have sort of the more secular West mm. who's saying, listen, you know, um, everyone who does not uh, yeah. ag ag agree to these one, two, three, four, five principles right. sort of thing are sort of backwards, you know, we need to move right. to the modern world. Right. And then there are others saying, well, we, we really can't uh, be truly secular Mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have this whole Greek idea of a separation right. between the spiritual or the sacred and the secular right. sort of thing. You know, and, and, and so I, I think there is that sort of ideology going on mm -hmm. on there. How much can you divide your spiritual life from your secular life? Right. But then there are also some political realities. Right. And those political realities are very, very, very deep. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, go probably deep, deeper than the Crusades, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the history of the West and most of the European West and um, uh, uh, North Africa and the Middle East, right. uh, you see that there's been, you know, fight for turf right. for a long time. Right. And so you have, for instance, the, the Roman Empire right. basically controlled in much of what we call the Middle East today. Right. But here comes Islam, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 120 years after Muhammad, the Umayyad dynasty. Uh, or I'm in America here, the Umayyad oh, 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 dynasty. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Basically, um, eclipsing most of the Eastern Roman em Empire right. and in their heyday, they went as far west as Austria, mm. you know. And, and, and so they, they're pushing back and forth and here mm. comes the Crusades and, yeah. you know, one excuse it was, you know, so that Christians can go and pray in Jerusalem. But yeah. really it was about, hey, we, hey, we have the Roman Empire here, we right. kind of want to get it back, right. sort of thing. And then, of course, um, the pushback after the Crusades until right. we get to the Ottoman Empire. Right. The Ottoman Empire, oh my goodness, that was huge. Right. Right. That was a huge em empire. But then you get to the end of the 
um, you know, the, the, the Ottoman em Empire, and right. here's a launch again during World War I, mm -hmm. and we have sort of the crushing of the Ottoman Empire, mm. and the deadly blow that came when France, Britain, Russia sit down and they come up with this agreement, the Asia Minor Agreement, which really right. benefited England yeah. and France European more, countries. the, yeah, the, the, the Sykes-Picot Agreement 1916, right. which basically carved out portions of the Middle East mm -hmm. for England and France. Right. You know, and so when we look at the reality of mm. national pride, mm. you know, this all plays into it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, again, the other right. from a political perspective again, from a worldview perspective, right. coming into our territory, mm -hmm. telling us they're in control, right. we're the ones who draw the borders. Right. For instance, we look at um, Iraq's invasion into Kuwait, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And from a modern perspective, how in the world is this sovereign country invading this other sovereign country? Mm -hmm. But again, in Saddam Hussein's mind, right. he's thinking, pre sykes Pico, Absolutely. When there was no Kuwait, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was one country. Right. And when we look at ISIS, as atrocious as their acts right. are, and uh, the terrible things they're doing against right. humanity, right. I mean, serious crimes against humanity. Right. Right. But again, we look at their stated purpose. Right. They say, we want to undo the lines that were made from sykes Pico, right. And so um, it's important for us to really take a look at the unrest in mm. our world today right. through these historical lenses, right. uh, through the worldview lenses, right. Right. because right. there are a number of things that seriously complicate the right. issues. Right. And we look at it sometimes strictly through the lens of religion, but it's a lot more than religion. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that's one of the, 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 the biggest things that I try to, mm. you know, nail in my research and my mm. work that, you know, religion is nothing more than a scapegoat. Yes. You know, we're talking about economics, we're talking about a history of secularism, mm -hmm. we're talking about, um, you know, so many other uh, strands that are linked to geopolitics mm -hmm. and just the notion of political science. International relations today is <laughs> it's being turned, in a sense, on its head mm -hmm. uh, because of the rise in religion-based activity in the mm. global public sphere. Some mm. consider this to be the post-secular, mm -hmm. in a sense. You know, mm. Not the fact that uh, secularism has reached its demise, mm. but uh, its importance in the world is decreasing in some places. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of centered around that secularization thesis that uh, with the rise in science and technology and modernization, the practice of religion in the public sphere would in fact decline. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Mm. Religion and the practice of religion is increasing, you know, around the world. Uh, so it kind of, you know, opens up the question, as you talk about ISIS and ISIL per se, uh, you know, what role should interfaith practitioners and actors play in promoting peace not necessarily from the top down, but from the bottom up, at the grassroots mm -hmm. level, in working together to inform, if you would, mm -hmm. state actors about these groups, about the historicity you know, of mm -hmm. the conflict and why it's actually taking place, and in some cases, informing uh, diplomats, in particular, mm -hmm. at the State Department, in London, mm -hmm. at Ministries of Foreign Affairs, uh, about religion and its, its impact mm -hmm. in the world to help resolve and solve some of these issues that are taking place? You know, um, as you ask that question, I'm thinking about uh, some of what's happening now on the American field mm. with uh, politicians making very negative statements about Islam yes. uh, because of the activities of a few. And there is a need for those of us who are really invested yeah in interfaith yeah. uh, to, to do more in trying to educate. Right. Because I believe that if you go into a situation thinking that, you know, this is who the enemy is, yeah. this is what the enemy be 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 believes, mm. and not understand that there's wide diversity right. amongst people who may profess a certain faith. Yes. And then the way in which you shape your foreign policy mm. 
is going to be geared towards that minority and it's not going to take um, the, the full spectrum mm -hmm. um, of people who adhere to this particular faith right. into, a, into account. Right. You know, and, 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 and so one size is not always going to fit right. all. Right. You know, so I think it's very important for those involved in interfaith, particularly those who have access mm -hmm. um, to uh, folk who are going to end up being the ambassadors and <laughs> the diplomats, etc., right. um, to, to, to basically try to find some way to convert, <laughs> the right. word convert, right, right. in the sense of, you know, we, we need more people converted to this whole notion that um, peace has to be undergirded with education. Wow. And if you're going to talk to um, this person who believes that uh, his religion tells him to do A, A, A B, C, D, mm -hmm. and you don't understand what perspective he's coming from, yeah. or you don't understand that in saying that, you know, he may be of X um, Muslim group and uh, Y and Z and B, D and F think completely different, yeah. you know, then you're not speaking the type of language that needs to be heard. Mm. Now, another thing you mentioned was I was just speaking about how we could probably get to those at, at the top who are making the decisions, yeah, yeah. but, but, but from a grassroots perspective, right. I think more needs to be done um, in, in, in communities, mm -hmm. um, developing resources, yeah. uh, so that people can really have an understanding that, yes, they may have a commitment mm -hmm. to um, their faith system, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, looking at the reality mm -hmm. that the faith system that mm -hmm. they embrace, this faith mm -hmm. system that they love, mm -hmm is something that has been sort of lent to them by their parents, lent to them by environment. And what I'm basically saying here... I like that. Yeah, so, yeah so, I see where you're going right, with yeah. that. So, yeah. what, so what I'm basically saying is that we are who we are, but most of the time, religiously, because of an accident of birth. That's it. All right? So had I been born in China, for instance, the chance I could have been John a Confucianist yeah. or Taoist. <laughs> yeah. Right, you know? right, right. And, and, and so I, I think this is one of the, the, the main steps to yeah. grassroots understanding mm. that yes, you have these people over here saying if you're a true Muslim or if you're a true Buddhist or if you're a mm. true Hindu, if you're a mm. true Christian, yes. then you need to follow us sort of thing. Right. When, um, and, 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 and you need to make everyone else believe the same as how we believe that's it, that's when, it. Yeah. When, when we are who we are simply because of an accident of birth. And so working with the grassroots mm. and basically saying, hey, you know, everyone is different. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. and so what can we find in the other system that can help to build, build those bridges of mm. understanding, that can help to pull together, right. and even in the system that you cling to mm -hmm. so tenaciously, right. did you know that, yes, you're a Protestant, but there are so many, many oh, different branches of right. Protestant. Yes, you're a Sunni, but there right. are so many different, yes, you're right. a Shia, but I, you know, there are seveners and twelvers and right. fivers, et cetera. Right. You right. Know, and, and just look at the whole thing, diversity. Right. And when I look at religion, mm. You know, we may self-identify with a certain system, right. but individually, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. individually, mm -hmm. we, we all kind of nurture our own religions. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know, the interfaith yeah. sphere, as I, if I can call it that, the interfaith sphere is the new reality, uh -huh. in a sense. Uh, this world is more religious today than 50 years ago. And the Pew Forum has a new report out where uh, they forecast that the world in 2050 will be more religious than ever before, mm -hmm. with Islam catching up with Christianity, with mm -hmm. the members of Islam catching up with Christianity. Uh, Buddhism um, will pretty much remain the same. Hinduism and Judaism, Judaism uh, will expand uh, in a sense. But What's interesting here is that in the interface sphere, it's a place where people of different beliefs can not necessarily come and worship, but can organize, integrate themselves, learn, educate themselves, and engage across these cultural and ethnic and lines of difference. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that the traditional interface sphere that we know of Pretty much the Abrahamic conversation, yeah, yeah, you know, so. Christian, Buddhist, excuse me, Christian, Jewish, yeah, Jewish, and and Islam, and Islam, excuse yeah. me. Uh, you know, it's now forced to think outward, mm -hmm. stepping out to embrace 
non-theists, secular humanists, our brothers and sisters from uh, the indigenous traditions, you know, from around the world, and incorporating their ideas and their right. conversation, you know, uh, you know, to the table and in, inside the sphere. But one thing that I find that is so important and so powerful with interfaith is that it allows an opportunity for all of these folks from different faith traditions and different uh, belief systems mm -hmm. to talk seriously about promoting peace in the world. Right. So now, peacemaking is real. Peacemaking mm -hmm. as it relates to uh, a religious actor or a non-state actor from a belief group working with a state actor mm -hmm. to resolve a conflict, let's say, in northern Syria or mm -hmm. in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. um, uh, peace building, working across religious and cultural lines and belief systems to promote peace after the conflict, mm -hmm. to promote conflict transformation, conflict analysis. And we see today that with a rise in moral conflicts and a rise in many of these new wars that we need interfaith actors more now than ever before. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, when I think about uh, the different models of interfaith, yes. you know, there is there's there, there's one sort of melt melting pot model, you know, <laughs> where, where where you kind of we lose all can it. just get you along know, together, and you kinda, yeah, 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 yeah. Almost like you almost like lose lose your identity yeah, when you yeah, go, you know, yeah. and, and 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 so you've sort of become post-religious in a sense. Yeah. So it's yeah. the whole sort of John John Lennon thing, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the the imagine, imagine the right, people. and you're based in there, you yeah. know. <laughs> but 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 then um, I I believe, you know. And let me just detour a little bit here. Yeah. A lot of young, young young people I talk today, they say, yeah. well, we're not religious, we're spiritual. You know, we yeah. hate religion sort of right, thing, you right, know. Right. And it's because of what has been done in the name of religion. Right. But I do believe that um, there, there is hope for the truly religious. And when I, when I use the word truly religious, I'm not talking about the truly self-righteous mm. or those who are overly pious. Yeah. But those who believe that religion um, can be used as a force for good. Right. And I think the truly religious can get together and again acknowledge the fact that even though I may be firm in my faith, you may be firm in your faith, that's not really an excuse for any type of um, ideological supremacy, yeah. uh, for any type of um, fundamentalist fixation on you right. can never be right. right. But those who are truly religious know that religion is supposed to be seeking answers for the world's problems. Yeah. Um, seeking ways in which, you know, we can make a better community. I don't yeah. know any religion yeah. that wants to see chaos in community. Yeah. You know, and so the truly religious who understand the essence mm. of religion and yeah. understanding that the documents of religion are usually there to inform personal faith, mm. not necessarily universal faith. Yeah. Yeah. And when we get to the point and we sit down, mm. I think that we can be more effective mm more effective in finding some solutions right. uh, to the many problems that are. Now you're here at the conference, what, what are you uh, presenting on? Your ideological violence yes, and hate speech? Right, yes, okay. uh, I'm in the, in, in the um, seminar, Ideological Violence okay. and, and Hate Speech with some very, very great people. We're on the same panel, right? No, I know, we're on the same panel. Shameless plug you know, Yeah, but, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at um, how to identify hate speech. Yeah. You know, um, hate, hate speech uh, is not always as evident as we think, you know, and sometimes in the name of free speech, we may protect hate speech yes. and not really take the sensitivities of various religious groups right. into account, right. you know, and some, something that may not be offensive, for instance, to a liberal Christian, yes. you know, may be offensive to a liberal Muslim. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and we need to take those things in, into account. And then I'm always going to look at, you know, this whole thing of how hate speech mm -hmm. can actually lead to uh, people acting violently through ideology. Wow. You know, and so we're going to take a look at some of those things. Where will uh, the interfaith uh, movement be, in your opinion, in the next, let's say, 10 years? In the next 10 years, I think there's going to be um, stronger you know, strong, stronger alliances made in interfaith, particularly here in the United States of America. Um, I think in some ways 
there may be um, two distinct, I spoke about the two distinct models of interfaith, one right. in which kind of your identity is just meshed to set you, you know, yeah, yeah. and then there's going to be the, 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 the other model, which, which one's going to be more successful right. in evoking peace in society, I really don't know. Um, I'd, I, I would like to think that, that, that those who take seriously faith um, are probably going to be more effective in evoking faith with right. peace because I, I think if you kind of allow your faith to just vanish into nothingness, <laughs> right, this, right. this melting pot, etc., then, then um, after, after a while, hmm. I guess what happens is that you create a new religion. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, that's ultimate what happens. or a hyper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, so I, d I do believe that we're yeah. going to see more effectiveness mm -hmm. um, in the future when it right. comes to those who are intentionally involved right. in, in interfaith. Um, I see a time when we're probably going to be uh, more involved in advising people to make political decisions. I think decisions. so. I think you're right about that. You know, that. and and, yeah. um, and 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 ho hopefully it moves mm. towards the good. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, well, Dr. Keith Burden, so happy to be able to sit down and talk with Great you here, here at the Parliament Giselle. for the World's Religions, yes, uh, and uh, I look forward to the many things that uh, we'll be able to do together. Inshallah. All right. <laughs> okay.